Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Hey, y'all, uh, this is uh, Reverend Ray, and I'm with my co-host, Sister Valerie Miller. This has been Christian Speaks um, Network. And so this is the Bread of Life segment. Um, but uh, just glad, just glad to be here on this Sunday afternoon, broadcasting yeah. live from the Washington D.C. area. We just say, uh, here's the valley side of hallelujah, man, amen, hallelujah, yeah. yeah. That song, that's that's one of those songs that get your shoulders going up and down. You know, you sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of them songs. Um, Actually, the song is by Andre Rose. That's my uh, my sister in law, really. She has a little CD going out, out now and stuff like that. Nah, a little CD. That's God forgive me. She has a CD out. She's had it for a while. And she's working on something. You know, very talented young lady as far as gifted in singing and playing the organ and everything. But I still have not get a, got here to, to mass produce and push it out that valley. So you pray for her, okay? I <laughs> will. A, a big, she has a dynamite voice, and she has quite a few songs. That she um she has on a little CD of hers and everything, um and she just I just can't get it to put, can't get it to push through her her and my um my um daughter uh, daughter uh, my um uh my my nephew my nephew's wife mm-hmm. um they have dynamic voices man you know you go like wow and, uh, and they both got CDs but I can't get them to do you know they give them permission to play it on the air and everything but I can't get them to push through it and stuff like that. So I try to promote them as much as I possibly can. But here y'all wow. again, you know, what the bread of life. Um uh, I'm I'm your host, Reverend Ray, and again this is um joined by Sister Valerie Miller on this Sunday afternoon at five PM. Um before I go even further I gotta give my co host some some prophecy. Thank you again and give her a chance to say anything that she has on her mind. Pray, Valerie. Oh, I'm just blessed today and I'm blessed to be with our listeners once again and I hope that um what we share with you today will bless you and that you, you'll get fed today. Um, and and we're just going to let God have his way. Amen. Amen. For uh, those that have a desire to call into the show, the number here is one 888 or you can call me at 646 646- Four seven eight zero six six zero. Okay, let me give you the number again: six four six four seven eight zero six six zero or eight 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 four eight eight six seven seven two. I don't have the chat room open as of yet, and I'm opening as we speak. And they would say, "And while I'm doing, let's go." That's just more than you said, Valerie. Yes, yeah, yeah. While I'm doing that, okay. Okay. Well, right. um, l- l- let me open up in prayer then. Um, okay, go ahead. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you once again for being the Father that you are. You watch over us, you protect us, you feed us, you provide for us, Father God. And under the sound of my voice, Father God, I ask that you would bless every listener. Thank you, Father God, that they've taken the time out to be with us on this Sunday afternoon when they could be doing a million other things, but they've taken time out to hear what you would have to say through us, Father God. So I ask that you would just bless them in their spirit, bless them physically, bless them uh, personally, Father God, uh, whether it be in their families or their finances, their jobs at home, whatever the case may be, you know the situation, Father God. I ask that you would open doors to them and, and close the ones that, that would cause them harm or, or bring destruction, Father God. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed in this place. Father God, just come and see about us. And we just thank you. We ask that you would forgive us of any sins, Father God, so that we will not uh, be in the way of you blessing us, Lord. So we dedicate this show to you. We ask that all listening will be blessed and that you would find favor, Father God, in the subject tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Father God. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. 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 That's just the Valerie Miller, <laughs> uh, uh, very uh, my co-host. I, 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 she's been faithful, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's been faithful. And that's, and that's not a dig, cause that's like, but she's been just coming on the air and helping out and just being a part of this ministry. And we thank God for her and the things that God is doing in her life. Um, again, this is the Bread of Life 
Uh, this is on the When Christian Speaking Network. You can listen to us on every Friday. We're here every Friday at 7 p.m. If I'm not here, you listen to me, this is the Pat, <laughs> and stuff yeah. like that, you know. So when somebody, we try to broadcast it um, on a regular basis and everything. So God has been good. We do want to tell you about some of the other broadcasts we do have. Uh, we want to remind you um our Thursday at 12 noon, we have Declaring the Finish Rate with Sister Pat Randall. Then, of course, we have Friday Night Joel with myself and Sister Valerie. And um, on Sundays, we have, at 7 p.m., we have uh, we have the Bread of Life with myself and Sister Valerie also at 5 p.m. Now, I, I, I believe that we do have a guest that's coming on. Um, let me cut this off. I, believe, I know that we have a guest coming on this Friday, um, Sister Valerie. Um, okay. For the life of me, I don't. Have it. I, I I didn't put it in the um the report yet in the uh the the, page, the website page yet, but I do that this week. In fact, we have a guest this Friday and maybe next Sunday, I believe. Uh, but okay. I'm not mistaken. I have to I have to check with the pet for sure and stuff like that. So we have a couple things that's going on. I do want to remind listeners that have been listening to the show. Uh, we 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 have begun to broadcast a couple of Pastor James Robinson um uh, pre-recorded messages. That uh, that we had and stuff like that, we didn't get his permission to do so, and everything. Valerie, I don't know if we got a chance to listen to some of the, some of them or not, but um, so we do do that. We have been able to do that and and to download that, and you can listen to it. You know, it is pre-recorded. Uh, well, at least one of them is pre-recorded and stuff like that. And um, uh, just let me know how you think of what you think about it, what you know, and everything. And send me send me some um. Um, feedback to the show and everything. And one of the things I did with them is that we, if you're interested in purchasing, uh, because the the, the 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 CDs that you're listening to uh, through the archives uh, are, are series. So if you're interested in purchasing that particular CD or the series, my my uh, my suggestion is for you to go to uh, uh, Trio Life Christian Ministry website, which is tolcm dot org, and they have a site where you can be able to. To purchase the CDs and anything like that. Also, you'd be able to get a chance to learn about um, who Valerie and myself and, uh, and Sister Pat are under, uh, which is um, Pastor James Robinson and Co-Pastor Marshall Robinson of the Trail Life Christian Ministry, which is located in Clinton, uh, Maryland, and if they're off of Piscataway Way. And I, and I also mention, want to mention this again. If you're ever in the area, just drop by and um, pay them a visit. Now, we're not affiliated with them other than the fact that we are members with them and stuff. This is a ministry that God has blessed us to do and everything. Um, but all the, almost all the teaching, of course, comes from Christ, but a lot of what we do and stuff comes from the training of what they have um, in, uh, instilled in our life and everything. So uh, please uh, drop by, uh, pay the, the, the church website a visit, uh, uh, listen to some of the archives of the show that we have here, whether it's uh, um, Pat or, or Valerie or myself, and some of the old um, shows that we've had. We, got a lot, we have over 120 archive shows. We've been doing this now since um, probably about February, and, and God has blessed this ministry. And we're grateful for that, Valerie, because you know it's not about us. It is about him. Um, That's right. That's right. And, so, uh, um, and Tree of Life, as, as Reverend Ray was saying, uh, we welcome you. We'd love for you to come visit. We're like Motel 6 where we always leave a light on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, okay. And um, so we just to, to come by and, and visit us, let us know, um, so, uh, say hello and stuff like that. Um, to either all the to the pastor or either one of us, we're always there and everything. We'd love to have you and stuff. And, um, um, I love my I love my church, you know, and to be in a church. I don't go to church and stuff like that. I love going to church because the word is being preached there. And my 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 thing with anybody is that just get in the church that's Bible believing, Holy Ghost fear, <laughs> and there's healing taking place, and deliverance taking place, and, you know, and the spirit of the Lord dwells. <laughs> Number yes, one, the spirit man. of the Lord dwells. <laughs> You know, get in that type of vibe, man. It doesn't necessarily have to be the truth, but just get in that kind of vibe, man. And no matter what you're facing in life or whatever and stuff, or you just want to just get some sound doctors and word into you and stuff like that. So, you know, and uh, the other thing I always say to people, and we're going to talk about a, a topic in a minute, is being able to have a being of a, um, have a teachable spirit, you know, because um, we never we don't know enough, you know, about the things of God. We think we do sometimes, especially as, as, as preachers. We really don't. We don't know nothing. <laughs> we, don't know, we don't know nothing about it, you know. So 
Uh, God is good, and if I do want to, as Pat would say, Pat will do on a regular basis. I do want to remind the listeners that you can listen to us on iTunes or the smartphones, on the on your website, on the internet, or all we all over the place. Please, 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 like us on Facebook. You know, uh, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like your posts that you post, anything like that, or uh, that's encouraging, the uh, the thing that deals with Christ and that kind of stuff. We have several ministries on that on that um, the, the Facebook page. Um, which includes like Ayana Butler and myself, and I think it's Pat, and it's just a Reverend Sunny, and I think I got used to Valerie. <laughs> so there's a whole list of people that are ministering for their page that uh, try to add to their page and try to encourage people, and that's basically what this ministry is, is about. It's, just, it's about spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and encouraging the people of God and allowing those that don't know to know that they can be healed or saved or delivered from anything that the enemy has set up against them and everything. So we're excited today about this Sunday's broadcast and everything. And when I was sitting there, I'm probably uh, a while back, and I was thinking about different things that we could talk about, because I, I didn't think, I, didn't, I knew that we didn't have a guest coming on for today and everything. Before I did that, I want to listen. I want to, there was a broadcast that we did. Valerie, remember last Friday we did the broadcast on Nelson Mandela and everything? Yes. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, it did not record. I, at least I can't play it on my own when I when I try to. I, I could play their commercial, Blog Talk commercial, but it just stopped. There's nothing else after that. And when I try to download it to my computer, the computer gives me an error. That message, you know, something's wrong. So I don't know whether it recorded or which. Let me make sure. Oh, wow. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, so I don't know what I don't know what happened. I don't know why I did record or whatever, but that was an awesome message. So at one point in time, Valerie, we probably need to get together and decide about doing that. Maybe not doing the exact same way because that was, you know, more like free falling and everything. But talking about Nelson Mandela and, and Martin Luther King and uh, uh, some of the other pe- people that came that had been around us and stuff would do that again. Um that was u- and using those scriptures, you know, and everything. Yes. The, the other thing. So we'll do that another time. So we'll get together and put our heads together. Because I, I, I thought that I think and that it's a very important message to need to be for all of us, not just because for the whole world. That sometimes we get away from doing those things of being that type of person and stuff like that. So we'll talk about that later and stuff. Okay. Um, all right. All right. So the other thing that, that our topic today is we're going to talk about the spirit of Caleb and Joshua. And as I was uh, reading. Uh, we're coming out of Numbers um, 13, actually. And as I was reading, I was um, um, studying and reading and looking at it and saying, I'm, I'm, I, I love reading about the Old Testament and, 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 and things that took place there and everything. So let me go, just go ahead and turn to our Bible to Numbers 13, okay? And, uh, and we're actually, we're going to start at verse 1. We're going to skip about around about, basically we're going to be dealing with Valerie's numbers 13 and 14, okay? And if okay. any time, Valerie, you, you want to jump in or you have a question, by all means, do so, okay? Okay. So you do know you that want me to so start off reading? Yeah, you can, yeah just read um, uh, 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 one, two, three for me, for, one, two, and three for me to start off with, and then we'll go from okay. there. Okay. We're reading from Numbers 13, verses 1 through 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. Amen. Now, what takes place um, through four through I believe it's uh, six, sixteen, and they start naming off the, 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 all the tribes. A man that was a leader, that was considered to be a leader among the different tribe, tribes and stuff like that, um, are from twelve tribes. So each tribe was represented um, as far as the one that went and checked out what was going on um, in the promised land and everything, in the wilderness or whatever, and stuff. And the purpose of of that, they, when I looked at when I began looking at Valerie, I began to say, I said, the reason he did it, he was, nobody felt like they were left out. Well, we didn't mm-hmm. see how we get. <laughs> well, we nobody represented us, my family. <laughs> so that's what <laughs> every family, you know, look, hey, look, we're still the same today, man. You know, well, I didn't get a vote. <laughs> I, I hear you. Know, <laughs> you know, but so he made sure every tribe, God 
Moses made sure every tribe was represented. And he told Moses to send them out. And the, and the Bible goes and said Moses sent them out. And um, then it, and, uh, it, succeeded, it, it gives the names of these different people that were sent out. And, um, um, from, of course, Moses and, uh, of course, uh, Joshua. And I'm not, we're not going to do all that. But it gives all the names of people that sent out. And it, by the way, what I want you to do is start at 17. Y'all be patient because we're going somewhere with this, okay? Okay, starting at verse 7, Numbers 13, verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land in Cana and said unto them, Get you up this way southward to mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell in, whether they are, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first stripe grapes. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Okay. So they went up, verse 21, so they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rahab as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south, and came unto Hebron, where uh, Ahaman, Shishai, yes. and Talmai, the children yes. of Anak, were. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Zon in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eskel, and... One Thanks. second. Okay. My um, computer just jumped off. Amen. While she's doing that, let me, uh, while she's doing let me explain to you what's going on. The 12 spies, they went out into the, the promised land, okay? They went out to this woman, and they, 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 they going all over. They see all these different things and everything. One of the things that she She's giving to say is they came to the brook of es- Esco and cut down from there there's a branch with one cluster of bait and 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 they bear between between two upon a staff and they brought uh, the pomegranates and other figs the, the, the stuff that they they saw and the fruits and stuff that they saw that <laughs> they had to put they could put no more than two on one staff man. And that's amazing and stuff. And then they went somewhere else, and, and they said that the, the place was called the Brook of Esco because of the cluster grapes with the city as it cut down from there. The grapes, all the all the thing that God said that was there was there for them, okay. And then in and, and verse twenty five, we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop right there for a second, brother. Okay. And in verse thirty five, says that and they returned from the land after forty days. They've been in this place for forty days, man. You know. They for and, 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 and me or the person that loved to eat, you know, the grapes. Come on, they saw all this stuff. They saw that was good land. They they saw all the different things that were going on. And, you know, and and the thing that I want to point out is that Moses gave them instructions. You know, Moses gave them instructions as far as you know what to look for, what to, and you know what to do and all that kind of stuff and um, and everything. And so they followed the instructions. But the thing that we'll find out later on as we we read down the chapter. The most of the number I come back and ask them for their opinion. At least and that's just the mind. But he didn't ask them for their opinion. He just wanna know what you saw. You know? But we'll find oh. out <laughs> We'll find out, man, later on that sometimes our opinions, man, get us in a whole lot of trouble, you know? You know, oh. because we don't see we don't see the things that God sees and stuff like that. And uh Valerie's asked me earlier, uh, about uh what is the spirit of, of Joshua and Caleb, but what the spirit of Caleb and Joshua? Well, Valerie, what I what I felt like, and this is just me, me again, and what I, in my spirit, I felt like the spirit of Caleb and Joshua was dealing with faith that they believe mm-hmm. God, you know, that they have faith, and we're gonna talk about that. They hopefully, and so we might again, we might not be able to get through this, but listen, uh, right, if you listen to this broadcast and so wherever you, I also want you to uh, 
a pin a note in for Hebrews because they all is tied in together, man. Because it deals with faith. Did they believe God? Okay, now, okay, Valerie, this is what we could do. Where was it? I stopped at verse 23, right? Or, 25. I stopped at 25? Okay. Uh-huh, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. Okay, 40 days. Then the 40 days, uh, Sister Valerie, is significant, too, you know? The 40 days is, is the, as we read on later on, but the 40 days, uh, 40, they spent 40, for every day that he's been uh, in the land of the, in the wilderness, in the promised land, and stuff, and, um, uh, Jesus, Jesus died on the cross for forty. Jesus, not that. Jesus fasted for forty days. You know. The other thing is they had to stay in the wilderness for forty years. So forty is a significant number, and we'll talk about that a little later too. But what I want you to do right now, unless you have any questions, we're going to continue reading, and um, we're going to tie this thing into with Joshua. Uh, for those of, that know that Joshua was like the the right hand of, of, of Moses or whatever and stuff like that, you know? I mean, he went with Moses' error. And Caleb, and Caleb and Joshua were both chosen to go out there and uh, spile the land and everything, you know? So, and the people that Moses, the, the, the God chose, not Moses, but God chose, you know, were very high in, in, in as far as standards in their particular uh, uh, families and everything. So these were people that was well known. They were in leadership position and stuff. And, and that's not, that's another thing. Oh man, Valerie, that's another thing too. They were in leadership. You know, mm-hmm. the people that went out to spy the land was considered to be leadership. You know, and stuff like that. So let's read on. Okay, let's go ahead and start at verse twenty six, Valerie. Okay, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, Valerie, okay. stop right there. Listen, check, check out what they just did. They came back. They had been spending 40 days out there and everything. They spied out the land. They, they, led. they saw all this good stuff. They saw everything that God said was there, there, and everything like there. You know, every promise, the milk and honey, all that was there. So they came in Solomon and Aaron, and, 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 and they showed them the fruit. They showed the valley the proof of what was there, you know. There's that old case they say, hey, there's proof in the place. Yes, yes. <laughs> they showed them the proof. Listen, the, the land is surely, and they said, listen, that's God sent us. They said, and, and surely, without a doubt, man, you know, with everything that we're saying from the bottom line, it flows with milk and honey. Listen, y'all, we ain't never, ever, ever, ever seen anything like this before. And the, the proof of it says, so you don't have to believe us, believe what you see. <laughs> This yes. is the fruit of it right here. Believe what you see. Touch this fruit. Taste of this fruit and see if it's good. All right, Valerie, go ahead. I'm sorry. Let's okay, verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Am- Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jesubites, and the Amor- Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb hey, still right, the people. Right Valerie, okay, you're good mm-hmm. right there. That's okay. another part that I put in. Okay, that struck me. You know, they didn't just said all these things and what they saw, everything that God promised. You know, and that ain't, you know, all this stuff, all this stuff. But then they had that. This is where the butt come in. The never less to me means but. <laughs> you ever have somebody, you ever have somebody uh, they, they, they have good wordings and all that God is doing for them, but my back still hurts. But. Yeah, but. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's always a but, man. You know, and if God is good, if God is good, God is good, we got it. There should be no but. God is good. Yeah, I, I don't, but God is good. And that should be the end of it and stuff like that. When I looked at this part, particular scripture, this particular chapter, and uh, verse stuff. I thought to me, Valerie, that they should have stopped right there. You know, uh-huh. to me, uh-huh. but we don't. But but being that we're all in the same, we don't. We don't. It says, "Never let the people be strong, 
you know, wait a minute now. God has just brought you through all the stuff that you have gone through um, before all this took place. He brought you through. He fed you with manna and stuff like that. <laughs> he gave you some um, a bird and stuff like that to the point where you couldn't eat it anymore. You got sick and stuff like that. He, 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 he fought wars and all that kind of stuff. He said, never let the people be strong. The dwarves in the land and the cities are walled, okay, and, and very, very great. And more often, we saw the children of Anakin there, which, it, uh, which were considered to be giants and everything. Now, this is my problem, Valerie. You can help me out here. Okay? This is why I want you to help me out a little bit. All okay. Right. If, they, if, they, if, they, if, they, if the people be strong in the land, the cities are walled and are very great, and then you got giants. But yes, there are all the things that God has always did for you and did for us and stuff like that. He allowed you to cross the Red Sea on dry land and stuff like that. He Consume your enemies and stuff when the, 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 the Egyptians came to the point where they, they never saw them again, ever. Right. <laughs> with the waves covered them up. If God did that, and I'm talking to all of us, if God did that, why is there another the left in us? You know? That's right. Why should it be, a, you know, a, a thing that we're in that we are fearful of because of the wall? They looked at the, the side, the cities, and the wall, and, and saw how great they were, and then he saw giants, and that, that was it for them. Go ahead, Riley. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think about that song. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it's Ty Trivet or not. Uh, he says, if he did it before, he can do it again. He did it for me, he can do it for you. So just like you were saying, if God has already showed you um, what he can do, you, you didn't just hear about it, but you saw God's might and saw what he could do, why would there be a question about a second time? Yeah, yeah. And the other thing why you was talking about, I was thinking about that uh, Jesus told his disciples that, hey, listen, we're going to go to the other side. So they all went in the boat. Jesus went to sleep, and, and everything. And a storm came up, and everything. And the Bible, the, 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 the Bible goes on to say that the disciples woke up. This little master, wake up, let's be prayers. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Wake up, let's be prayers. And all he got up and, and said, "Peace be still." And I call him a little of little faith in that. And the thing that that, that strikes up, but even with this story being told, that Jesus had already told them they're going to go. They're going to the other side. And all they had to do was believe. God had already said that you're going to go into the promised land. No matter, you know, all they had to believe. Now, what the water rep was to do was to, to the, the disciples, you know, the Anakites and the giants and the Hittites and Jebusites were to the children of Israel. So that just goes to you. And that happened thousands of years apart, you know, 42 generations apart from each other. So and that still goes on today in our own life, man. You know, yes. God said, God said for us that you, this is going to take place, that I'm, 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 I'm committed to the promises that I've created in you and stuff like that. But we get sidetracked with the giants in our life. We get sidetracked because the, the wind and the waves are about to toss us over the boat and everything, rather than be at rest or at peace in the promises of God. And that's what God yeah. is saying to the people today. That's what God is saying to all of us, Valerie. Be at peace with the promises of, of, of what I said. Because I, yeah. my... my <laughs> And God himself says that he shall not be mocked, and he's not a man who should lie. So, I mean, what else is there left to do except stand and be still and let him be God all by himself and do what it is he needs to do? Yeah, yeah. Even Moses told them that when they would get across the I said, he said, be still. You know, you know just, just, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, stop all your, your the noise and all that kind of stuff, but just stand still. And now, let's go ahead and read, read some more. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's go down to, let's start at verse 30. This is what, this is what Caleb comes in, Larry. Go ahead. Okay, verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Mm -mm -mm. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone 
to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Mm. Now, this is the thing. This is what we talk about. The, the spirit of Caleb comes out. The, the Caleb, the people, after they hear the, the, the other people's uh, report, the other ten spies' report, you know, about the people being strong and the cities are walled in. I mean, that, that, their report will produce a fear in the people of God. You know, and again, I go back to say what I said to you before, that this, this is not just ordinary people that, you know, these are people that, that was high in leadership position. This were people that the people of the people of Israel looked up to in their own families. Know what I mean? Yeah. This, is like, this is this is similar like I'll probably get in trouble with saying this is something like a pastor uh, or, or, or or a pastor of some sort or a bishop being a we have, let's say pastor or or deacon. The Jews, some of you respect is in the body of Christ going out and, and spying out and checking out the details of it. They coming back with a bad report and stuff like that. Mm. And then your first, your first, the first response to most of them would have, well, man, they they supposed to be really close to God. You see what I'm saying? The first yeah. Response, they know God more than I do. Well, see, they, it must be true because you know I see them how they worship with God and how they dwell in the house with God and spend time in the faith. So what they say it must be true. So I, I look, I don't know, I didn't go, but I gotta trust what they say. No. Yes. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But Caleb didn't go along with the crowd because the majority of them, which was Tim, say, hey, look, man, no, this is this is too much for us. Stuff. But Caleb said, the Bible says Caleb still the people before, before Moses. You know, Caleb yeah. stood out. You he, know, had, Caleb, he had a, a, a conquering spirit because um, he, I mean, he was just adamant. Let's go. Let's, yeah. it, 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 everything was it w- was just a command with him. He's saying, "Let's go, let's possess, let's conquer." So um, you're right. He 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 didn't listen to the report. He just knew what was in his spirit. He knew what God can do, and and he was ready to just go on and walk into his promise. That's right. It's, it's that Caleb still the people. Caleb stood in between the people. Look, y'all, what y'all doing? He still up before Moses. You know, he came up, came up, stood up before Moses. He said, Moses, look, y'all, you know, I don't know what I'm saying, but came up from, I, I'm not going to say that, but I'm perfect. But, you know, I, I, for me, I look, he came up from one of them guys that didn't say much. He was, you know, well beat it. But he stood up and said, like, look, let us go up at once and possess it. But we are well able to overcome it. How did Caleb know that? It had to, he had to know that value because the faith he had in God, man. He yeah. had to believe that because he had seen what God had done before. He had yes. seen the Bible thing that, that God had won over a period of time. In life, and he believed it and was sure. He said, I know that and I'm sure. <laughs> but, the, 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 but the men that went up with him said, we are not able. They just totally called it. Every Caleb said, they said it again. So Caleb would say, yes, 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 we can do it. We, with God, with Christ, we can do all things. The, the, the other, other men would say, no, you can't. It's too much. It's too much. No, this no, is too much. Caleb acted out in the spirit of, of, of what God had given him when he had seen. The other men acted out of their flesh of what they saw. <laughs> yeah. Of what they saw. And, they, and the Bible says that, that they brought an evil report of the land, which they searched to the children of Israel, saying the land is that, that through which we have gone to church. It is a land that eats up the heaven. Now, wait a minute. It eats up the heaven. You just said that they had big grapes and all that kind of stuff. You just said you already knew. Uh, your test, listen, Valerie, is this in a scale by the way this that I thought about? They had they have a testimony already of what God had already done. It's yes. not like they were just new and didn't know God. These were people that knew God, you know, that knew of the awesome. They even knew when God went out and sent punishment among them. Okay? They swallowed up those that came or they gave uh uh Mary um leprosy because she de- she defied uh, uh Moses and stuff like that because she thought that she could be a prophet too. They knew of a new God like that. But still. But still. And they said we saw the, and the and verse thirty said and, and they talked what they saw, we saw. And then we saw. We saw the giants. We saw the giants. You didn't have so we saw the giants. And it said and it was comes of the giants, even in our own sights. 
as grasshopper. And the text I always talk about in our own sight. You wish Valerie sometimes and I know this for a fact, sometimes we are our own worst nightmare, man. You yeah, know, we are. We, we, we are. Man. We 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 are put ourselves down. We we some, see something bigger and stuff like that that God has already promised us stuff and based off it's up that he's already promised and because we don't feel like that we are equipped or we can in my case we don't speak proper <laughs> English and don't know, I'm pronouncing our words effectively, the correct way. Stuff like, we don't feel like that we can stand, you know, and speak anything of God. Or because yeah. That, I, that reminds know. me, I remember um, when I first started in my career and I was applying for jobs and my mother and I were talking one day and, and, uh, and I was telling her about something and, and I said, well, no, I probably won't even qualify or they probably won't even even consider me. She says, you apply for that job anyway. You let them tell you no. You don't go in there saying you're not qualified. Um, and and why you why do you feel, sometimes in in reality, you you have to know that you do have some skill sets for any type of position that you are applying for. And I did in fact have some skill sets for that particular position, but. I just felt that, you know, I had seen other people who I felt were so much better or or had so much more knowledge, but it didn't mean that I couldn't do the job once I got into it. So I was I was defeating my own self by saying, you know, oh, I wasn't qualified. And she says, no, you go on and apply for that job, and you let them tell you that you're not qualified, but don't don't defeat yourself. Right. And and Point you're right. We do that a lot. We do look at ourselves as the grasshopper sometimes, um, versus looking at the faith that God tells us we're supposed to have. Right. And and the thing and the thing with you that you thank God for your mother or people that God puts in our path to remind us just who we are. You yes. know, even the, 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 whether a song, whether a person, you know, uh, whoever, to remind us just so that we are not we're not grasshoppers. You know, we're not grasshoppers. In fact, we're bigger than the giants. <laughs> yes, how about that? We <laughs> told we're bigger than the giants. Listen, family, the, the thing that really caught me about that and stuff like that, the, 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 the giants weren't even thinking about us. <laughs> they, 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 they was probably, you know, the thing, and that's the thing we, I, we, I think we as Christians a lot of times miss and stuff like that. In fact, the giants are probably more afraid of us than we were, you know, than we thought they were. They yeah. saw us come with, they thought was one of us ready to ready to run and stuff, you know, but because we had already put that that on ourselves and stuff that we said some grasshopper, but the giants were trying to look man, the truth is, really some bad dude. They got they said an awesome God that did this, that did that, you know, that destroyed the Egyptians and took care of this army over here and everything like that, you know, and uh, they, they have not, in fact, they have not lost a battle since they came out of Egypt. So what we're going to do? How are we going to respond to these this, this 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 great people that's coming and everything? That truly they have a God that that's on their side, that's better than any God that we know of, you know? But how are we going to deal with this? This is how the giants are probably reacting to us. But once the giants sign up, they look, they're afraid of us. Yeah. And that gives them the boost to know, like, hey, look, you afraid of me? Why are you operating your fear of me? I'm going to use it to my full advantage. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I'm going to use it to the advantage to the point that I'm going to put up a stronghold against you. <laughs> to the point that you ain't going to be able to cross over this stronghold because you don't believe in the God that's in you, that is anointed with you, that, that's with you, that has purpose and plan for you. And so, so yeah, I'm going to be your giant. Even though you're bigger than me, because what it seems, but you don't see yourself bigger than me, so I'm going to be your giant. I'm going to be the one that's looking over you and saying, ha, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, stuff like that. Hey, uh, we're, we're going to take a little short break. Not a short break. We just want to uh, go ahead and do some announcements. You're listening to When Christians Speak. This is Frat, This is the Bread of Life. Uh, um, we're going to talk about the spirit of Caleb and Joshua. I'm your host, Reverend Ray, with my, my very favorite co-host, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sister Valerie Miller, man. And we're just having a good time in the Lord and on this Sunday afternoon. If they broadcast live from the Washington, D.C. area, the number here, if you have a desire to get in contact with us, is 646-478-0660. Or you can always give me a um, holler at my um, Facebook page or uh, the chat room is open. Um, you can 
uh, hit me with the um, email. It's winchristianspeak at gmail.com. And everything. So you have all different kinds of ways to get in contact with us. We do thank you for listening to the show. We pray that it has been a blessing to your just man, this whole thing about what was going on with Caleb and Joshua is an awesome testimony and stuff like that. You know, but I, and it ties in so much into what was go in Hebrews eleven, man. So I would encourage you to find out more about uh um the stuff uh, Caleb and Joshua and stuff like that and then research it and, and find out the meaning of their names also and all that kind of stuff. So and uh, I do also want to remind you uh, on Thursday, we have the Clay and Fitness Work with Sister Pat Randall. And, of course, we have Friday Night George, myself, and Sister Valerie at, at, at 7 p.m. And then um, Sunday evenings, we have the Bread of Life with myself and um, Sister Valerie again. Um, we encourage you to like us on Facebook. We want to continue on and everything. And, let's, and Valerie, you got anything else to add? Yeah, I, I, I want to ask everybody a question i want to i want to i want to you know every now and then i like to send out a challenge brother ray and yeah. in 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 reading this 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 one chapter uh we were in numbers 13 okay we see that the israelites uh didn't trust god and in their self doubt their their it, their decision did make sense in 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 and of of themselves, and and in their doubt, their decision made sense. But we see that they forgot um, a promise from God is a sure thing, no matter how unlikely it seems to us that that God's truth is set apart from our feelings or our situations or our opinions, as you were talking about earlier. So we see that um, Caleb stood for the truth, and he knew God's promises and and knew that God could be depended on. So we have two things here. We we have the naysayers and we have Caleb standing in in God's faith. So I asked our listeners a question, um, and I'm challenging you. Are you willing to stand against the pressure of popular opinion to do what God's word says. Let me ask that again. Are you willing to stand against the pressure of popular opinion in order to do what God's word says? So if everybody says, oh, no, you'll never get that job. Oh, no, you'll never be healed. Or, or, or you. I, I think about the brother we talked about today in church. He came up for prayer about his foot, and and there had been talk about that he might have to lose his foot. But we prayed and we spoke a word over that brother, and and he came back with a report today saying, "Oh, well, it doesn't look like he's going to lose that foot." Uh, you know, he we he may have to go through some some other procedures, uh, but he's going to get his healing. You know, we know that the doctors can treat, but ultimately it's God who heals. So when you are in a position, or or, or when you're in a situation, are you willing to stand against the pressure of popular opinion? in order to do what God's word says. That's my challenge. Amen. Amen. So Sister Valerie said I have a challenge and everything you can send that your response to me, uh, of course by by your the Facebook page of uh when Christian Speak uh, Talk Radio. That's the Facebook page. Uh, the response that you can send it there, or you can send it to my email address again, which is speech at gmail dot com and everything or if you if you're live you can always come into the chat room and um, uh, give me some feedback there and stuff like that. Uh, but I do notice there are some guests in the, in the chat room. I thank you for joining the show and everything. Uh, our, our topic today, of course, is we're talking about uh, the spirit of Caleb and Joshua, and we're coming out actually out of Numbers 13 and um, uh, 13 and 14, and also we're using a little bit of Hebrew, too, in there, too. Uh, one of the things that Sister Valerie just mentioned that, I, that it, it stirred up something to me is that uh, a lot of times, uh, we do go against the, we, you know, God has called us to go against the grain of uh, of popularity or what of what other people think or the, or the majority of think, you know, and everything because some the majority might think one way and stuff, and they uh, and the majority would really want you to in unison and agreement with the thing. But if God is, you know, you have to listen to God. If God is telling you to do something 
control different. You have to be obedient to what God is saying you do. And that's one of the things I like about what uh, jo- Caleb and Joshua did. They was willing to go against the grain, so to speak, and not fall into the trap. It's like, oh, yeah, because they could have said the same thing. There's something within them saying, look, y'all, yeah. I mean, they didn't deny what the people were saying, okay? They didn't yeah. deny it. But to the fact that they knew that God was 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 more able to get, bring them through all that, you know, and that's what should have been the other ten report too. The yes, all these things is. A, but the first thing out of the mouth, so listen, y'all. We're gonna tell you first. We know that God's able to bring us all this, you know. It got, but we get, since you asked for a report, we gotta give you this is what we find out. And then in it again, but yeah, <laughs> it's in a but no, but yes, God can and He will bring us through that. So I mean. Um, one of the things I like about the Old Testament, Valerie, is that um, it gives us, you know, we don't really have any excuses, <laughs> you know, and like, we can't say we don't know. We're reading and we're studying like we should. God has shown us, show us, us in, even through the Word of God and everything. Nobody has to come and prophesy on you. Nothing. He'll show you where you are in your relationship with Him, whether we have faith or whether we doubt, you know. Whether it be striving for the wrong thing, he'll show, he'll show us. That's that's what the word does. The, the word the word was shot upon us, you know, and everything. And it will begin to cut away those things that are, are in us that is not Christ like, you know. Uh, yeah. If we let it. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 you know, you don't want to shortchange yourself or 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 um deny yourself blessings because when facing tough decisions you can't let fear of potential difficulties blind you to God's power to um to help you, you know to help you um and 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 be your guide we we can't be blinded what could be a difficulty or what could be a uh, um uh, uh, you know a, a hindrance cuz again God says we can speak to that mountain and it shall be moved so where's your faith today? Yeah. And again, now you make some great points, girl. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> you know, Praise God. Because basically that's, that's, that basically that's what we're talking about, you know, with the children of Israel at that time. We're talking about faith. And not just them, us. A lot of the stuff that we, we're facing, man, after God said it will be, and we come against anything, fear is a major factor in it, man. You know, fear of being afraid, you know, and that's not a, that's not a fear, it's not of God, man. It's not. So fear is a major factor to stop us from doing things that God has already ordained us to take place. So we either miss our blessing or postpone our blessing to something that God has already ordained or go through some major stuff, which, listen, that's the other point about this whole thing, that God was, was was sure about his promises that he had already made. His promises would come to pass. Now, what happens is that the, 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 uh, the, the scripture goes on to talk about those people, we didn't even got that. Those people, I can give you a taste, but read it for yourself. They, they, they did not go to sit to the promised land because they, later on they begin to really murmur, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, probably another time, but we'll give, give you a little taste of it right now. But later on they begin to murmur and all that kind of stuff. You know, God got in and said, oh, my God, ain't going. <laughs> and, and, you know, that's, that's why it is, it is so important to know the word for yourself because God will be faithful to perform it. And that's when you can start um, uh, believing to see and not necessarily seeing to believe. And And I'd like to admonish everyone to not be so quick to reject advice, especially when you don't like it. Um, I, I encourage you to take time to evaluate it carefully and weigh it against God's word. Um, are you really hearing God's message? You may not like it. The truth does hurt sometimes, or correction does hurt sometimes. But when you know the word for yourself and you know God for yourself, you can take that um that opinion or that advice and evaluate it and and line it up to see if it lines up with God's word. So when Caleb encouraged them to act and let's go, let's conquer, and and let's possess, and and you're standing there saying, well, there are giants in the land, well, 
what did God do to show you before that you're not a grasshopper and that he is mindful of you and that he is Jehovah Jireh? What, what, you know, God has, will have to have shown you that to know, uh, for you to know that he's faithful and true to his promises. Yeah. And this, this is what I want to do. I'm, I'm, I'm stepping outside. We've only got about 10 minutes left, but I want to do this. Uh, real quick, and then uh, maybe the next week or the week after, or whatever, Valerie, we'll, we'll decide and we'll talk uh, how we want to do this. Because uh, I do think this is something we need to continue on. Uh, I'm coming from Numbers 14, um, and I want to start at verse 1. Valerie, go ahead and start reading uh, verse 1 through uh, verse 9 for me, okay? Okay. Yeah. Numbers 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? And they said to one another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jep, Jep, uh, nay, yep. which yeah, were right. of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto. Oh, I'm sorry, my computer jumped again. That's okay, I got it. And they spake okay. to all the company of the children of Israel, saying, "The land which we pass through to search it, it is exceedingly good. If the Lord delight in us, then He will bring us into this land and give it, give it us." a land with floors with milk and honey. And it, verse 9 says, Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Man, and that's, that's, that says a, a lot right there, man. And again, we don't really have the, right, the chance to get into the detail, but the fact that, that, but they, that all the murmur, and they was willing to go back to Egypt. They, listen, the part that I'm, I'm, I'm going to say right there, and then we start doing the closing thing, and everything that sticks out, that they said, let us make a captain, and let's return back to Egypt. Are you kidding me? Let us That's what I said. <laughs> this has got to be a joke. And I think if I was living back in that day, I think I would have said the same thing. This must be a joke. <laughs> go, back to, go back to bondage and all that kind of stuff. You know, after you already seen the things that God is, but not just that. Wait a minute. You just had... Your, your captains before ten of them have been your bad report, so you're willing to trust them again to let one of them lead you back, <laughs> back to Egypt after they bought your bad report. After the, God said that you will possess the land, and that's the thing that I was about you, you, you and I both are touched on. God said it that you will possess the land. You know, yes. it's just that Jesus said, you, "Let us cross it to the other side." Look, we're going to the other side. You're going to possess the land, man. And that was the word that God had given him, okay? That was the word that should be burning in the heart more, the promise of God. That was the word that God, that God gave um, Abraham, that you, your, 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 your seed will be blessed, you know? Yes. That's why I was telling him to him, that's why he, because he believed God, man. And these people had just all they believed, even if just a small amount, but just believe God for the, what they saw. They did. And they said, well, God did this, then he'll do this for me too. Not look at, you know what I think about? Um, when 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 they were captives in Egypt, they were fed leeks and onions. Now you eat enough onions, you I don't think you're gonna be smelling all that good, and I don't think that's a very tasty meal. It might have kept them healthy, but now you're in a place where you can get milk and honey and grapes and whatever else that the land offered that you can start eating from the fat of the land, and you mean to tell me you want to go back to that that slave-driven uh, uh, mentality and, and, and 
you know, it, it, it it's just hard to fathom. Yeah, and and not just that, Valerie. I mean, we talk, we're talking about them going back to Egypt, but our Egypt can be in a circumstance that we felt comfortable that wasn't good for us, you know? Yes. I, I eat it, man. It could be going back to a situation or going back. There's, there's something that's dead as fast as we go, we go back and smell it, <laughs> kiss it in the mouth to resurrect it, but God is already dead because God had taken it away, but we felt comfortable in it, in it, even though we knew it wasn't good for us, you know, mm. no matter what it is and stuff, you know. So we go back and lay beside it, you know, <laughs> rather make love to it, whatever else, and God is already called us out. That's good. That's mm-hmm. not, they were willing to go back to something that was not good for them, that was death, that brought them tears, not joy, and stuff that that was they were there was a slave mentality. You mean all the things, all the ugly and nasty things that they were willing. To, and the question for us, because you always got to reflect what was going on then, and to what's going on now, and are we willing to do the same thing, or are we doing the same thing, or are we trusting God? Are we believing that God's going to do exactly what He says He's going to do? Do we, yes. believe, do we believe? And then even if we, be, we believe, just like the man said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I'll be offering up that kind of prayer. God, I believe. But there is, in this case, there might be some doubt there. In fact, I know there's some doubt there. God, I'm praying that you help my unbelief to the point where that I'm, I'm a whole holly and I'm going, you know. Even the point that I have a, that's a small measure of, of, of what you said, believing what you said you're going to do, you know. And yes. everything. So you got to be the end. We're almost done, Valerie. <laughs> no, no, I think we uh, hit it. Okay. Um, hey, but you... <laughs> I, I, I really appreciate your, your point that Egypt can be whatever that thing is in each of our lives that would keep us in bondage. Um, yeah. when, when God says, look, let me free you of that and let me give you something better. Yeah. So I I, I, I want I want everybody to to really take that to heart. What is it that you keep going back to, and you know that it's causing you pain. You know that it's causing you some sort of um, unsettling. That God is saying, let go and let me take you to some place better. Let me offer you something that's so much uh, better for you. Um. So let let's keep that in mind that Egypt can be that thing which which keeps us in bondage. Okay, we do want to send a uh, a shout out uh, to the Valerie uh, to the Lakeisha Williams. She's uh, uh, she just joined um, when Christian Speak Talk Radio. Anything about her story and everything, uh, Lakeisha? I, I want to share your story, but I don't want to do it without your permission. I know you posted it on Facebook. But I don't want to do it. Too. But what I will read this is she's committed to wait and glorify God with her body and her life. And she 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 sought Christian counseling to work through the issues of her past and through and through that she realized that everything I went through was a part of God. You're right. If you still listen to the broadcast and stuff, you're one hundred percent right. And my encouragement to you, Lakeisha, is that you hold on to God. You continue to let him have his way in your life and everything you need or you desire or whatever, he will fulfill. You know, but let just be peace with that and everything. And yes, yeah, he has brought you reading what I'm reading now, yes, he has brought you a mighty long way and you'll definitely will continue to be in our prayers. Uh, we do we do have a couple of ex people that join when Christian speak up talk radio and um uh, uh um, sister Vendetta Roberts also joined and a couple other people without going through all of that. But thank you for uh, being a part of this ministry. You are a part of this ministry. And we love you and we pray that God will be with you always that and, uh, he will be in the answer to prayer and heal and deliver whatever the case might be might be and stuff. We thank you for being a part of again we thank you for being a part of the ministry. Uh, Valerie what I want you to do is just go ahead um and let you go ahead and close this out. Okay? Are you still okay. there? Yeah. Yeah, you just go ahead and close this out and um uh before we do, let me let it run. Listen again. Um, you have listened to when Christians speak um, radio broadcast, okay? Uh, today's segment, of course, is the Bread of Life and the topic was the Spirit of Caleb and Joshua. I'm your host, Reverend Ray, and I was joined by my co host, <laughs> my, my favorite co host, <laughs> Valerie, <laughs> Sister Valerie Miller, and everything. If you have a desire to, uh, to reach or get in contact with me, um, you can't get in contact with me on the Facebook page uh, with Christian Speak, or you can just Google um, with Christian Speak. We do have a website also. Uh, you can uh, get in contact with my email address, which is with Christian Speak at gmail.com. 
Um, and like we're all over the website, guys. I mean, if you're going through some difficult, if you like have a prayer request or whatever, I mean, on um, on Facebook you can IM me and I get that that that's between you and I and stuff like that. And you can let me know there whether you want to get me to put it out or whatever and stuff. But we want to be a a beating. We want to don't want to um, do anything that you know as, as far as privacy. That's the reason why we do a lot of things that we do and everything. But we you are in our prayers. We thank you for listening to the show. We do encourage you again to tune in to uh, Sister Pat Renner declaring the finish work at uh, 12 noon uh, on every Thursdays. And, again, we see you on Friday night, George, myself, and Sister Valerie, and at 7 p.m. on Sunday evening, which is the Bread of Life with myself and Sister Valerie, at 5 p.m. and everything. Uh, we do thank those that have been helping with the show and been a part of this ministry and everything. And um, we can get Valerie to uh, say whatever she has to say and pray us out. Then we're going to sound the Rams on. Amen. Okay. Amen. Father God, we just come before you once more just to say thank you. Father God, help us to see where we miss it, Father God, where we we return back to what is our Egypt, Father God, that keeps us in bondage. Father God, we just ask that you would loose us, break every chain, Father God, so that we can live in peace that we can have liberty, Father God, that we we can live unashamed, Father God. We ask that you would forgive us of our sins so that we will not be held back from any of our blessings, Lord. We thank you for this incredible word today. We thank you for giving us a word of knowledge and understanding, Father God, and I pray the wisdom that will come with it if we act upon your word. Father, I pray that each person here would study the word and and get to know really who you are, Father God, and the power that you have, Father God, that we may know you for ourselves, Lord, and we can walk without doubt and, and we can walk without fear and that we will no longer see ourselves as grasshoppers, but we will see ourselves as giants amongst giants, Father God. Father God, We are heirs of the kingdom. We claim it right now for those who don't feel that way or don't see themselves that way. We are heirs of the kingdom, Father God, and and we are recipients of your power. We have the ability to speak to those mountains, Father God. We have the ability to conquer and possess. And we just we just pray a confidence, Father God, in everyone today who's listening under the sound of my voice, Father God. And we thank you. We thank you for that restoration. We thank you for that renewed strength and power that we will start walking in starting today in the name of Christ Jesus. Father, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We call the angels out to encamp around us, Father God, that we are blessed going in and blessed going out in the name of Jesus we we don't we don't live by rejection we don't live by fear cuz you said you gave us a sound mind father god and we thank you we love you and we won't fail to give you the glory and the honor amen 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 praise the lord now let me explain something to y'all all right we sound the ram horn to set the, the show for the ram song so it's to celebrate uh victory in our life no matter whatever, all of us have victory, <laughs> some more than others. It's, uh, we just sometimes just got to go, well, you know, sometimes we just got to come to the knowledge that we have victory over all things. That when yeah. Christ died on the cross, that it was done, it was finished. It's done, y'all, you know. So the purpose of the Ram Horn is to sound of victory, to remind us of the victory. The purpose of the Ram Horn also to sound the assembly. God is calling his people that are called by his name, that have already humbled themselves and have submitted themselves unto him that are seeking his face, you know, and, uh, you know, that are doing these things, you know, to come together and to call to, to, to the assembly, that we might all become in agreement and realize that this is the time um, uh, that we live in the last days, that we will begin to intercede on behalf of not just ourselves, but our families, our, 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 our household, our, our, the people that we know, the people that we don't know, our jobs, uh, the, 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 our, our, this country, you know, and the yes. Lord have for the pastors and those that have leadership. For they are there are there are many that are uh, that are falling and uh seeking other things. But we pray that, uh, that God is calling his people right now. But that we might be in agreement of the things of God and not of the things of the flesh. That we may, as a nation, as a as a group of people might seek out the things of God and and 
please, to please God in all the areas that he desire us and seek after his face and just be that which God is calling. He's calling us. That's uh, why the, the, the sound of the alarm, also, sound of the alarm to let you know that there's trouble that's coming. I believe that we're living in days that, that, that things are going to get worse. They're not going to get better. I'm sorry, you know, and I know that's good. I guess popular belief, oh, things can get better. Um, no. I don't see things getting better. I see things getting worse. I see men becoming more and more lovers of their own flesh, you know. I see young people and young men and women, you know, doing things to destroy their own parents, you know, disobeying them or whatever. I see greed, greed being a part of life, you know, and stuff like that. And I, what I do see is people doing whatever they think is good in their own eyesight. So we're living in a time like that, that we need to, we need to sound an alarm, you know. That we need to come into the defense city and everything and, um, and begin to seek after the things of God. That we need to get in a, a place where a Bible-believing church, uh, Holy Ghost field, you know, spirit field, where God reigns, not the pastor, not the deacon board, or in it, but God reigns, you know, and he has to say so and everything. But do we have, we have, we're in a place or a church or a tabernacle where people are operating out of obedience. You know, out of obedience and not greed, out of obedience and not and not want to have a desire to be seen or be known, but out of obedience to the things of God, you know, and having the zeal of God to be able to walk in it. So that's the, and the last thing that the show from represents is praise. You know, that they, 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 if you blow the trumpet and, and everything, and you shout out loud to the, whatever walls there will begin to come t- falling down. You know, whatever that kind of wall might be. You know. Whatever war they might be. So this time we're gonna play this is Reverend Ray and Sister Valor, we're signing out. We're gonna play the show for horn and we're gonna sign out, okay? Okay. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Valerie. All Thank you, Brother Ray. Y'all yeah, yeah, be safe out there. God bless. Have a blessed week. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.